I think we are live. We're live. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yay. Um, but yeah, really quickly, like if I wanted to do online school, I would have had to change the campus because there's an online campus and then the actual campus. If I wanted to do online school, I would have had to graduate from online school. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> so. Wait, which school is it? Uh, NAU, Northern Arizona University. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Is it your first year or? Yeah, it's my first year. I I would be a sophomore, but since I took a gap year, it's my freshman year. And I think I'm actually going to be rooming with like sophomores. And so I'm kind of like, <laughs> I don't know why it's so intimidating <laughs> for my <laughs> age. <laughs> huh? Do you recommend taking a gap year? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great and that um, it was just, I was able to travel and stuff like that. And it was, it was really nice. It was really fun. Hi, Lena. Hi, Lena. <laughs> We're talking about gap years. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed taking a gap year. It was really fun. I got to visit a bunch of places and, <clears throat> um, and, I'm really happy because if I had applied for schools um, during my like the first semester of my senior year, I would have applied to become a nurse. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end of senior year is when I was like, hey, maybe I don't want to be a nurse. <laughs> so if I had applied to school, I'd probably be going to like school for nursing. Um, and yeah. Um, <laughs> in my gap year, I did, it was planned ahead of time. It was like a travel group sort of thing. So um, it was like planned where I would go and it was with a bunch of people that I didn't know, which was fun <laughs> um, a little bit. It was also daunting because in a group of 30 people, there's bound to be a couple people that you just do not mesh with. <laughs> um, but I made a really good friend and so that was cool. Um, and I was like texting her earlier today. So, <laughs> is that um, normal in Cali, like after um, high school, to just take a gap year with some people? Huh? Is it normal in California, like after high school? Oh, it's like I think it's not that normal. I think it's mostly just normal in like Europe. It's much more popular there. Um, but yeah, it was kind of just I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I was just like. I uh, gap year. <laughs> um, and so that's what I decided to do. Sorry, I'm trying to like read the comment. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> um, okay. Final year at university. It's so scary. That's nearly over for me. Yeah, okay. That's scary. <laughs> um, not to like make you more scared. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, going into the first year is kind of daunting too, because I'm the same age as the sophomores and I'm actually going to be rooming with sophomores and I don't know why it's so intimidating because we're the exact same age, but for some reason I'm like, you're higher up. I can't, <laughs> I can't. Um, let's see. Hi, Aspasia. <laughs> I'm, uh, doing English lit major. That's, what I'm That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. There's, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it, but. <laughs> as long as you like love doing it. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, how long did I travel? Um, for my group trip, I left on September 6th, but it was because I was in Arizona that I had to go to San Francisco airport and then go to Canada. It, this was all like the San Francisco thing lasted a day and I was able to visit a friend who lived in San Francisco and then from Canada to Madrid. And then I was there for like less than two months. Um, but part of that time, my mom also had a friend in Paris. And so she flew over. And so I got to stay with her, which is nice because I really missed my mom. <laughs> Wait, that's so fun. You it just was really travel fun. by yourself for a year. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't by myself, but I was the only person there that I knew. <laughs> so. Hi. <laughs> Yes, it, I think it's much more normalized. It's not very common in uh, the US to take gap years, but I think it should be more normalized because it's nice. <laughs> I wish I could, but like everyone around me, it just goes to college after high school. So yeah, like, all of my friends are in college. I don't know 
or except for the ones that are going into like trades. Like I have a friend who's going into welding and he already has like a job. Um, but yeah, so I don't, it, it was definitely weird because I was the only person I knew that was doing that besides like, do you guys, I, I used to love study too. Like <laughs> I used to watch it all the time and Unjaded Jade went on a gap year. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's where I got the idea. Hmm. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm very nervous, especially because it's going to be in person and Arizona is like one of the places that's been the hardest hit. So, you know, um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still like a junior in high school. So like <laughs> talking about all of this is exciting, but yeah. um, far away. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I am. Um, it's very strange how much you change as like a person just from when I would have been applying to colleges to the end of the year and then like the entirety of June I just changed so much and then since then it's like wow <laughs> um yeah you used to have a study tube oh that's so cool <laughs> um I'm an English lit major with creative writing concentration, maybe journalism minor, still no clue what I'm going to do with it. I feel that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm i really excited with the English lit major, but um, there's also so many other things that I'm really interested in, like linguistics is really interesting, but I have no idea what I would do with that. So, um, but I just, and then like, I don't know if you guys know what etymology is. It, popped in my head the other day. It's like the study of the origin of words or something like that. And I love that. I love that so much. And it was just a random word that popped into my head the other day. And I was like, huh, I don't know what that word means. And so I Googled it and I was like, oh, that's something I like. <laughs> do you want to be like a professor or something like that? That'd be fun. Um, but I'm also very nervous. Like, I think I get very nervous because if I'm a teacher, then it's my responsibility to teach people. <laughs> and I don't want to suck at it. <laughs> so. Okay, do you still have like your old videos up, Lena? Let me know. <laughs> um, I feel like there's pressure to go to college as soon as you graduate, my parents said college or military. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, my parents were pretty relaxed about it. Um, but at first I was like, yeah, I wanna solo travel. And they were like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> You're not going alone. <laughs> Um, so they were more concerned about that aspect of it, I think. You don't have any of your old videos. <laughs> yeah, like in my area, it's like if you don't go to college, then you're just like at home and you have to have like a job. Like nobody really travels if you don't go anywhere. But that's really cool that you did that. Yeah, it, it was really fun. Sorry, there was like thunder. <laughs> you're planning on doing some? That's pretty cool. I, I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> so how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well. How's everyone in the chat doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I love talking about school, but it also just, like, stresses it's me out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not a chill topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, how did you like choose the group you were traveling with? Um, it was basically through this thing called EF Ultimate Europe or something like that. And they basically choose the group for you. <laughs> um, so it's just all these people that are signing up for the same time. And then you can like chat beforehand on the Facebook group. I didn't really do that because I'm lazy and I don't like Facebook. <laughs> um and then uh, you meet everyone basically your first day in wherever your first city is. And uh, that was intense. Because I also started to get a migraine at the end of the day. So I was like, I'll meet everyone tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't really get to choose who I was with. Um, it was just kind of by chance. And luckily I was with a lot of really cool people. There was just some people that it was like, <laughs> Aww. I think when you're traveling in a group, you're bound to come across the people that are like drama queens, I guess, when traveling. Um, Were they all European or like? No, it was, we only had one Canadian and then it was all Americans. 
Oh. Yeah. I didn't even know that it, like, existed. <laughs> yeah. There's also another one called, like, Kentucky, I think. That's what my friend used to do a lot. <laughs> I'm happy that you have guacamole. <laughs> Can you see the chat? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't. I just can't really click on it. it. <laughs> okay. No, um, I'm just like, sitting here <laughs> watching. <laughs> you. Okay. Uh, let's talk about what we're reading right now. I guess you start. Okay. Um, let's pull up um what I'm reading. <laughs> so I read on my phone usually most of the time. Where is it? <laughs> right there. So um, I'm. 40% wait 40% through Crowd of Midnight because I actually want to get back into Throne of Glass. Have you ever read that? I think I read up to Crown of Midnight. I didn't read, I think Tower of Dawn is after that or something, maybe. Air Fire. Well, Crown of Midnight is like the second book, and then there's like Air oh, Fire. I read up to the fifth one. Oh, Empire Storms. Maybe. Yeah, because then the sixth one was Tower of Dawn. That's all I remember. <laughs> Did you like it? I liked it and then um, it was kind of weird. It's like, I really wish I wouldn't let people dictate my reading choices so much. <laughs> Cause right as I was reading it and it was getting popular, a lot of people were giving it flack for the lack of diversity, which is obviously a problem, but mm -hmm. I was still interested and I was like 14 or mm, probably more like 15. And so I was like really interested in it. It was one of the first series that I had really gotten into. And so when you see all of these like people that are like no bad, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. okay, I stopped reading. And so I did, I just like Aww. stopped reading. Um, I was also a little annoyed because it's constantly like, she's the prettiest girl, she's a badass assassin. Like everyone loves her. And I was like, dude, come on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, like, it got old after a while. Right. Like the first few books are like slow and like I already know how it's gonna end up, so I don't even know I'm reading it, but like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna read it for probably just reading Sarah J. Mass. And then I'm also with Cersei because as I said before, it got like boring and mm -hmm. slow, and then I'm rereading Little Fires Everywhere so I can finally watch the TV show. Oh cool. I haven't read that and I have everything I never told you. Um, but I haven't read that yet, and I really want to soon. I would but, highly recommend. Yeah. I'm reading a um, bit too many books right now, and that's what's causing me not to finish them. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I used to read a lot of books at once, and lately I've only been focusing on one, and I don't know if that's better or worse. Like, I haven't really figured that out yet. Um, do you like Sarah J. Mass? I don't know. <laughs> um... I read a court and Thor uh, I've read a court of thorns and roses, and I didn't love it. But I don't think many people do. It's just like the rest of the two books. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I had the second book, and I was like, I'm never gonna read it. And I think I said this in a video somewhere. But <laughs> as soon as I unhauled it, I was like, you know, now I kind of want to read it. <laughs> and so I'm just like, dang it. Um, so I might read it at some point, especially because the relationship that I think is supposed to happen. Um, like I guessed it and then I talked to someone who had read it and she was like, yeah, that's what happens. And I was like, cool. Um, I like that, I think. I don't know, it's been a while <laughs> since I've read it, but I think I would like that relationship to work out. So kind of want to read it. And then I really enjoyed the Throne of Glass series for the longest time. I thought, even though it was kind of repetitive and that everyone fell in love with her and all that stuff. It was um, it was really interesting and there was a lot, I think there was still some depth to it and some like mystery and stuff like that. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, I just like read, read Sarah J. Mass after like all the hype for her. So I, I really don't care. Like some authors I read before, like Cassandra Clare, I read her before all of that. So it's just like different seeing that, but I don't really let hype get to me in the first place. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, for Cassandra Clare, I've read City of Bones, like, forever ago, and I was like, mm. <laughs> I didn't yeah. love it, but I read it, Clockwork Angel, and I'm in love with it, and so I want to finish that trilogy, and then I'll probably read all of the Mortal Instruments, um, 
And then after that, I might like continue on with the rest because I really want to get to Chain of Gold. But and I guess I could read it after I finish the clockwork. The infernal devices. But, yeah. Um, in my opinion, the infernal devices are the worst series. <laughs> so it kind of surprises me that you liked it. Yeah, I think it was just. Um, I think I had really, really low expectations going into it too. So, yeah, I get that. Sorry, I just, I just whenever I read it, I want to click on it so that like people no, know. Go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. I feel like she was really popular for a while, and I guess uh, House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City, one of those, <laughs> came out, and so she kind of got hype again but yeah for a while I don't think many people were very into it yeah like my twin sister loves Akatar and thought Throne of Glass was pretty good and then she thought like Crescent City was like absolute trash so I'm like hmm and but then again like, are like, so yeah sorry <laughs> a, a lot of people are like back and forth on um I, I lost my train of thought I don't know anymore. <laughs> have you seen the exposed thread of Cassandra Clare on Twitter? No. I have. What is it? Um, so Beck sent it to me because like she tweeted about it, and then it's nothing new, like the fact that you know there's an incest trope in City of Bones. That's what weirds me out. It's like Yeah. And then like Cassandra Clare used to write like incest fanfic and whatever. And I I mean I just like her works objectively, but I do see how that can like, you know, be a problem. But the thing is she's not like denying it. You know, she's like grown as a person, but I'm not here to defend her or like make anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, but, I mean, like, I knew about the incest thing, obviously, because well, like, do they find out their siblings in the first book? Or siblings? I think it was like the end of the first book, right? And maybe I know the second book they were like, or maybe it was the end of the second book. I don't know. I'll, I knew all of that before going into the books, so I wasn't quite as weirded out by it because I knew they weren't siblings, but I was still like, you guys think you're siblings? <laughs> um, but all I remember from the first book is the very beginning when they're going into the club and then some point in the middle where um, Alec, is that his name? He's like really pissed at Clary. <laughs> because he's in love with Jason. Spoilers for City of Bones, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then the very end, I think they like ride away on a motorcycle or something. <laughs> you got the book down. That's, that's all I remember, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> um, uh, same for for which one? <laughs> um. I think the most problematic thing was her defending child. What? <laughs> yeah, that was also in the Twitter thread. But the thing, I think what she defended about it, it was the fact that, you know, she was writing like um, sexy fanfic, you know? And mm -hmm. that has to do with like teenagers, you know, doing it. And then she was like comparing that to like, some people were like calling her like a pornographer because she was writing about it. But she was like comparing it to like, gay fetishization, which is like, I don't know, Twitter, I'll send it to you if you're curious. Okay, okay. Um, but I mean, people like, do people consider smut writers like to be pornographers? You know? Yeah, exactly. But um, <laughs> I, I also like think most of the um, like sources for it were on like forum pages. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Plus, she's gotten like this backlash for like a while and still hasn't spoken up on it. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it's also weird because, like, I've always wondered about, like, sex scenes about, like, underage kids, like, kids under 18 in books. It's like, is that, like, is that considered weird? Because, I mean, I guess people normally, like, I'm off camera. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not, like, an odd age to do that. But, I don't know, I feel weird that it's, like, written about, but also it's accurate in some ways. It's a very yeah. <laughs> Authors always talk about that there should be more like we should like normalize teenagers having sex, you know, whenever they need or like want to and are comfortable with it. But at the same time, it's like underage and taboo. Yeah, like, do I really want to write about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's back and forth incest thing for two to three books. Okay. Um, 
I feel like they find out that they're siblings at near the end of the first one. And I think they're kind of like, I don't care <laughs> or something like that. And then in the second one, I don't know how many, cause I haven't read it, but. <laughs> yeah. Like I knew, well, I didn't know about it before I read it. And then when I read it, I'm like, this is this true? And then, you know, it like gets revealed that it's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's definitely easier because I went into it knowing that they weren't actually siblings. So I was like, it'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I'm currently reading Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, and I'm on page like eight. So, <laughs> and so oh, far yeah. I'm actually really liking it. I may only be on page eight, but it's pretty good eight pages. So, <laughs> Um, and then I just got the audiobook hold for Dream of Thieves in, so I want to start listening to that soon. The thing was that she said she didn't understand the problem with keeping pictures of... <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I mean, like, neither of that is okay, but there shouldn't be a but. I don't know why I said but. Neither of that's okay, so she shouldn't have, like. That's weird. Tom Felton, that was Draco, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Lena, for the information. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I'm. But there's also, I guess, some talk about, you know, how her, like, gay relationships get more attention than her female-female relationships. So people, like, say that's, like, fetishization or whatever. Uh -huh. But do you, I don't know why, but I have nothing else to say. <laughs> do they get more attention in the books or do they get more attention from the fans? Because those are two different things, too. Exactly. But, like, in the books, you know how Malik is, like, the... Mm -hmm. like star couple or whatever and like everyone yeah. loves them so I think from the fans that's like more important and then she kind of wrote on that so then she has more like um male male relationships in the future and her female female relationships are like kind of like in the background you know okay yeah I get that um because I definitely think it also uh for certain books it depends on the fans a little bit like if there's two relationships and one of them's male male and the other one's anything else like if the fans are focusing more on it sorry there's like a spider like on the outside of my window like moving along <laughs> the web and it's like bobbing up and down love that um but yeah i think the fans can also like kind of shy why can't i speak that <laughs> i can't say that word at the moment um like more than the author intends to sometimes maybe but yeah, I agree. Yikes, yes, yes, very much. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So do you, do we like, do you plan on reading in this live or do you just wanna like keep answering questions or? I don't know, if more questions come in, we can answer them. Um, currently there are three people watching. <laughs> Yay, three for people lurking who is the third person can you please comment <laughs> uh i don't know it might be ellie but she might have left because it's been going like back and forth between two and three so oh i see yeah um i think it's also what's everyone reading though in the chat huh we can talk about that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I think it's also difficult because people like your channel is more known. And so people might be going to find that for the live. And then they're like, <laughs> you know, no. no, I love your channel. Thank Are you. you filming anything or like editing anything right now? Um, I just finished editing a, um, Oh, I was going to comment this on like your stream. I think you were saying you had a twin. You wanted to know what sort of videos to do. I just did a video. It's like the first sentence challenge um, with uh, my younger sister, which was, it's really difficult because she mumbles sometimes. 
um, which I do too. But she has like an interesting accent and I don't know how to explain it. Like she's my, we're related, you know, but like, I don't know how she has this accent. It's just the way that she speaks. And um, it can be a little hard to understand sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was really fun doing that with her. And I just finished editing that. It took forever because literally half of the footage was just this laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that'll be up tomorrow, I think. And then I just filmed. Do you have like an uploading schedule or whatever? <laughs> yeah, I I do Mondays and Fridays for the most part. Um, there are times where I'm like off a little bit, but um, I try not to put too much pressure on myself for that. Um, I'm trying to do like one video a week, but like that's not working out. My June wrap up's going up tomorrow, and it's just taking so long to edit. Yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely difficult trying to figure out how to edit. It's like, how perfect do I want to make this? <laughs> um, I recently tweeted, like, how, when do people um, actually like their content? Cause like, after I edit it, I think it's like fine. And then I leave it up. And like, literally the next day, I'm like, I absolutely hate this. I don't know why it's up. <laughs> I saw that. Um, keep spamming. You're good. We yeah, keep spamming. <laughs> we, we love them. <laughs> we love the questions. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, it's, I feel like I overall sort of like my content. There are definitely certain videos where I'm like, <laughs> um, but I just, I try to be more positive about it. And I just, what, um, there are certain things that I'm like excited about um, with the videos. I think one of my favorite videos is like the Dark Academia video, just because um, like rewatching that all to make sure it was like edited properly or whatever. Um, I thought I was like mildly chaotic and hyper and I love that. I love being hyper. It's great. It's way better than being very exhausted. And yeah, I'm like waiting for the day I run out of video ideas because like, I don't know how much longer I can like be creative. Um, what are videos y'all are excited to make? I actually have an idea and so it's like a flower book tag and I've seen it I looked on YouTube to see if there were any of those and I've only seen them in different languages. Like there aren't, I haven't seen any English ones. If you guys know of any English ones, let me know because I don't want to like steal anyone's thunder. But um, yeah, and so it'll be like questions like, my sister gave me flack for this because I, cactus is one of them. And I was like, well, cactus have flowers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, like that first question is, uh, what book made you tear up or something like that? Because cactus are prickly. Um, <laughs> and so I just came up with some of those questions. And hopefully I can get that up. Like, I'm thinking about doing that next Monday. Because I'm also currently editing my Breaking Dawn <laughs> read-along. Or not read-along, but just, like, reading video. And, God. I also rearranged my entire room in that. So there's going to be a lot of time lapses in that video. <laughs> I'm excited to do my reading vlogs for the Reading Rush. Like, I'm not a vlogger, so that's going to be really interesting. Plus, I'm so scared that I'm not going to read at all and just be editing the whole video, so. Yeah, I'm I'm going to make those probably as minimally edited as possible. <laughs> um, just because, like, I, there's so much to read. I'm going to get a live Chloe Brown, first of all, and then a short story, like one of the uh, Sherlock stories. So it's only like 20 pages long. I and love then, <laughs> yeah, I've been watching the show a lot. <laughs> and that's the to the episode where they like go back into like the 18, is that right? 1800s? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, I just got to that episode. Yeah. And so it's really fun. Um, I've seen it like five times now. It's just oh, Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Um, uh, you should just, you should just upload them because it's really hard to like enjoy what you make yourself. Like a lot of singers and stuff like that will even be like, God, I hate my voice. And you're like, <laughs> what? Well, like you don't know if other people will hate them too. Like if you just uh -huh. upload it, you never know. And like, the thing is you can always private, like it's not going to be there forever if you don't want uh -huh. it to. Yeah. Um, taking a thumbnail is so hard. Oh I forget God. to do it all the time. And so literally yeah. half of my thumbnails are me like <laughs> exactly in the middle of talking um, because I always forget to do it. 
And like my camera, I don't have a viewfinder, which is like why I need a better yeah. camera. And I just like pray that I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also editing them is like hard because I do it in like Pixar and stuff like that, or like sometimes Canva and it's just like not easy. Yeah, I do. I think I told you this like yesterday. I do mine on Procreate um, and that's nice. But for a long time, I didn't even know that there was like an add text function. So I hand wrote all my things, which I like that style. But um, it looks a lot nicer when it's like actually a font, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. Still undecided if you want to do the reading rush. Yeah, I'm not doing seven books. That is not something that I am doing. <laughs> That's, mm -mm. I think, because I'm reading the Avatar comics or like um, the manga. Wait, no, sorry, comics, not manga. Um, that'll be like seven books easily done. So, mm -hmm. but you know what you should do? You should just read Get a Life Chloe Brown and then join our live show and therefore <laughs> you participate. <laughs> yeah it's i'm really excited to read it i i got it on kindle um because i don't know why i was like nervous that it wouldn't come in the mail in time that <laughs> like when i found out i was going to be reading it i had plenty of time <laughs> but for some reason i was like i need to get it on kindle <laughs> i have it right here where is it and then i also have the lovely war where is because <laughs> you told me to get it yeah. so it's so good it's so good and um so I read Percy Jackson earlier this year for the first time ever. And Percy. it was so fun and I loved it. And like, there's a lot, I think there's a lot in the video where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. But I think it's just because I'm trying to like force myself to do it. I don't like giving myself assignments. <laughs> I'm not That's very That's why I that. never do PBR videos. I'm such a mood reader uh -huh. that even having these eBooks on my phone makes me not want to read them because yeah. it's like a <laughs> I um I've only done TBR videos when it's like for a readathon, but I've been doing a lot of readathons lately, and so it's so frustrating because I haven't read what I want to read, and I'm very nervous about going. I mean, I do want to read it, but like specifically when I want to, but I'm also very nervous about going to school and then not having time to read, and so I feel like July is my last time to read any books that I want to read. I'm like, I can't read that fast. I agree. I love thumbnails, but I always forget to do them. Yeah, it's it, it's <laughs> it's difficult to remember. When is the live show for Chloe Brown? It's Go July twenty sixth at four p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so Eastern Standard Time would be seven p.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's going to be on Nitty's channel. And I think I said in the video it'd be 30 minutes, but like we can just talk however long we want. You guys can leave whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know how long, I don't know if it'll take longer because um, there's gonna be more of us. So like we're each gonna have to talk. And so it might make the time yeah. longer. Plus we have like the chat to look at and like mm -hmm. I've never done like a live show for a book before. So I have like a few things I've written down cause I'm like a planner and mm -hmm. I think that'd be enough time, but yeah, we'll just, we'll play it by ear. <laughs> Yeah. What is your Goodreads goal? My Goodreads goal currently is 60 books. It was 30 at the beginning of this year um, because that's how many books I read last year. And then I surpassed that and I was like, what? <laughs> um, but I'm currently um, reading my 50 or reading my 60th book. So I, I, want, it, I want it to be 100. But I keep like going up by 20 increments because I don't want to not get to 100 and then be disappointed in myself. Yeah, so I got that. I'm like really nervous about that. <laughs> so about I've been doing Goodreads goals since 2018 and they change every year. Like 2018, it was 150 and I read 160 to mm -hmm. 65. And then, but that was in eighth grade when I had like time to read. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> Last year, it was like 35 and I read 82, which is like, okay. And then this year it's a hundred and I'm at like 92. So yay. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I've been mainly reading graphic novels cause I've been in a slumpish area. So that's why it's easier to accomplish. Yeah. I've technically only read 58 books but I read one of them twice. So, you know, it like automatically counts that but it was Heartstopper. And so I feel like I'm cheating but you know, those also no. like, it's not cheating, it's reading. And like the yeah. whole audiobooks aren't reading thing irks me. I know you don't me read too. a lot of audiobooks, 
but it's so annoying. <laughs> um, but I love audiobooks and they're just they're very helpful, especially because I cannot focus for anything. <laughs> um, so when I have noise and visual, <laughs> like it helps. I also listen to music when I'm reading because yeah, I I've read Chain of Gold six times and I'm counting that. I count my textbooks too because oh I had to read it, so it's going yeah. in there. And then audiobooks, I personally don't listen to them because I just can't focus on it. I don't know why. Plus, I listen on like three times speed because that's how I read in my head. Yeah. So um, I just um, listen to audiobooks if they're rereads or if they're hyped up. Yeah. Yeah. I um... <laughs> it, They're mainly graphic novels. It's really not that much. <laughs> but you can check out my Goodreads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, But I... um. Don't remember what I was going to say. Sorry. <laughs> no. Yep. <laughs> I am so distracted so easily. It's really bad. It's a, it's a problem. <laughs> How many books have you read so far, Lena? Yeah. Um, but like, it's like halfway through July right now. And I think I've only read like four books and one of them has been a graphic novel. So it's just with YouTube and everything going on, it's so hard to read in the summer. And summer's like my best time for reading. So it's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. um, how many books have I read this? I don't know. <laughs> I read Eclipse and Breaking Dawn this month. And then I got to check Goodreads because I don't remember anything. <laughs> Um, but I, think I read I, Normal People this month and it was wonderful. I highly recommend it. You should read it. You read what? Normal People and then I watched the TV I, show. Yeah, I, I read that. It's so good. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah, you read it? Let's talk about it. <laughs> yay. Um, but I, I started watching the TV show and then I found out it was a book. And so I like stopped what I was doing and waited for the book to come in. And then I read it and I watched the TV show and I was like, That's smart. Um, but I'm also like okay with not reading that many books because the reading rush is coming and that's when I'll like get my game on. At least that's what I tell myself. Uh -huh. um, I've read I've read five books so far, but one of them was a play. Um, and then the other one was like it's it's like meditation sort of things. It's very uh, easy to read, I guess. I didn't, there were, I didn't read it, but there were some things, like there was one paragraph where he was talking about like the freshness of children. He meant they're like chi or something like that. <laughs> it was like, this does not sound okay, dude. <laughs> um, hi, Charlotte. <laughs> hi, you're good. Ooh, oh, right. Good for you. I can't run. <laughs> um, any future collabs coming up? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anyone in my area that reads other than my twin sister and like two friends. Yeah. And I don't know like how to collab over like video. <laughs> I just yeah. like, I'm on my phone. I'm like, this is nitty. <laughs> I'll be like, you're a TBR right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Normal People is my next read from a secret TBR. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was really fun. Um, I mean, it, it, it was kind of sad too, but. <laughs> so good. As someone who like thinks plot is like really slow, or as someone who doesn't really care about the plot and just like character development, mm -hmm. fabulous. I'm not a plot person. Like there are certain times where I'm reading a book and if it has a good plot, I'm like, Ooh, but the character's got to go somewhere, you know? Exactly, exactly. Um, I just, I also love Connell because he just talks about books all the time and like literature and the way he talks about it, so nice. <laughs> yeah, the writing was like immaculate, but some people complained about it because it was like a bit too much at some points, but I personally don't really care. <laughs> I, I like it. There are certain times where, I, don't, I mean, I don't really remember it being like super flowery. Is that what they mean? I mean, like one time it was like she was visually imagining when she could have just said she was just visually think like she was just imagining like they didn't need to be visually in there, you know, but yeah. I think the author is incredibly like so smart because the conversations they were having like the two characters were like big brain. Yeah, I just I thought they were so intelligent and I loved that like 
she was like super smart and she knew it. <laughs> and then Connell was like, I'm not smart. And she was like, yes, you are. And he got into Trinity, which is really hard to get into. And um, then like she defended him. Like he's the smartest person I know. Cause they thought he was like poor. And I was like, Mary. <laughs> oh my God. There are so many characters to hate in that book. And it's like, <laughs> and I don't want to yeah. talk about it because you haven't read it yet. Or not you, but <laughs> Lena. <laughs> But that's um, like another thing in Sally Rooney's books, like her background characters aren't just there for like just being there. They actually have like mm -hmm. a good stable yeah. personality. What's, she's what's the other books? Has she only written one other? She has wrote a conversation with friends, and I haven't read that yet. Though. I want it's to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um I've read Hi, seven Melanie. so book. Why can't I speak? <laughs> read seven books so far. Hi. <laughs> um Good for you, Helen. That's cool. <laughs> Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. How are you? <laughs> um, do you read nonfiction sometimes? Um, Never. <laughs> <laughs> I like memoirs as far as nonfiction goes. And almost all other nonfiction books that I've read, I am really into them for like the first third. And then I'm like, where's the story? <laughs> um, yeah, I find it really interesting and I love learning. And then I'm like, no, I don't love learning anymore. <laughs> but um, I mean, memoirs are really cool. Let me, it's too far. I'd be right back. <laughs> I personally read for enjoyment and like nonfiction and memoirs really just made me bored. And I like to be there for like <laughs> the story, but I do read like the hyped up ones. Like I'm going to read Becoming and I've read Educated. So yeah. if people say they're good, then I'll give it a try. Yeah, I have Becoming and I haven't read it yet, but I'm excited to read it. And then I got on um, book of the month, I got What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Blacker. And then, which is like an essay. I love memoirs that are in essay format. I think they're really fun. <laughs> um, and then I read Unfiltered by Lily Collins. And I love her as an actress. And so I just, I was like, I gotta get this. <laughs> She's in like a bunch of my favorite movies. So it was kind of like, but Beautiful Boy, one of my favorite books ever. It's very white and you can't see there we go <laughs> um it's loved um yeah <laughs> it's very good it's very sad but i love this book and it's non-fiction but it feels a lot like a story because he's talking about his life and stuff like that i mean i've read we should all be feminists and it was also wonderful but again it's just i i just like something moving in the story for yeah me to, like, I read a different book by her. It was like the uh, Dear Ajiwe, like 15 Manifestations or something. I feel like I always say that part wrong, but <laughs> I read that and I, I enjoyed it. I didn't love it though. But um, yeah, I feel like there are certain nonfiction books that I really should just get rid of at this point because I haven't read them yet. I don't think I will. <laughs> um, what's a book everyone should read? You go first. <laughs> Me? Um, I think I'm gonna have to go with Gone Girl because it's just like my favorite thriller of all time. And that's what like introduced me to the thriller genre. Not that I read many thrillers anymore, but it's just like, I think it's so intricately crafted and an all around just like good book. Mm -hmm. Um, I think The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, um, because it's a middle grade, but I read it for the first time last December. So it wasn't like, oh my God, this is middle grade, you know? Same with the Percy Jackson books. It was like, I love this. <laughs> um, but it just, it feels very accessible and I love it. And the talk about death is very chill, I guess. Um, death like actually terrifies me. <laughs> like, so, that's so cool because like, I'm not scared of death at all. Like <laughs> if it's coming, it's coming. I don't exactly care. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just for some reason it really freaks me out. And I think what freaks me out the most is like other people around me. Mm -hmm. Um just like they're not here anymore. Yeah. That's yeah. I've, been, I've been like very fortunate. I don't know anyone personally that has passed away, so maybe that's why. Yeah, I, I, I know some people. Uh we don't have to get into that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so it was it talks a lot about, I mean, it takes place mostly in a graveyard. So it talks a lot about death, but it's all very relaxed and it's not like scary. And so is I really slow? enjoyed that. Huh? Like the, is the book slow? Um, I don't know. I, I just, <laughs> I want to reread it again, but I highly recommend the graphic novel version. Love it. 
love it so much. And each chapter is illustrated by a different person. I think there's only one person. So big. I checked it out once and it was so long. Huh? I checked it out once and it was so long. Really? The graphic novel, yeah. Let me grab it real quick because there's two volumes, but they're not that. Exactly. <laughs> but they're like pretty short. But like together. Okay. But that's like the size of Heartstopper. <laughs> but Heartstopper has like bigger pictures and like I just thought the graphic novel version that's has like more dialogue, you know? Yeah. So the thing with the graphic novel is that it's exactly the same as the uh, like regular book. So one nice thing about reading the graphic novel is that you know nothing's being left out, but mm -hmm. there's a lot more text. <laughs> um, the only thing I think that's really cut out is like he said, she said, because there's speech bubbles. <laughs> um, I'll reread it just for you then. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, you don't have to, but yeah, it's like one of my favorite books. It's a book that I've tried to make everyone read. I made my mom read it and she loves it. <laughs> okay. You need some book recs. Okay. Well, we just gave you two. Um, I'm trying to think my other favorites. Um, Radio Silence <laughs> by Alice Oseman. I'm going to read it. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand if you want to wait to read it till when you're like closer to going into college. Um, but I think it like, works either way, I guess. But um, I understand if you want to read it like closer to that time, just to like, you know, <laughs> get more into it or something. Um, I also really love Little Women. I read that um, from like December to beginning of January. I don't um, read many classics. Yeah, I, I've i been trying to get more into classics, but sometimes it's just, it's rough. <laughs> Um, and then Carry On is one of my other favorite books. I think that's a book I've read the most amount of times. Um, yeah, because I would I read Fangirl, but like the story of Carry On didn't really interest me, so I didn't pick it up. Yeah. Um, I, I read Carry On before I read Fangirl because um, it was like, that's what my friends told me to do because they had read both and they said that fangirl like had spoilers for carry on even though it's a pretty different story there are like certain things like ow <laughs> in um fangirl like simon and baz get together and um that's like sort of what happens in carry on but it's also very well known at this point that that's what happens <laughs> so i don't i don't feel like it's a spoiler but maybe i'm sorry <laughs> um I love feminist lit. It was my most read genre in a period. Do you have a specific recommendation, Lena? Because yeah. I'd love to read more. Yeah, definitely. It's a nonfiction is just hard to wrap my head around sometimes. Um, who's your favorite booktuber slash the booktuber that got you into booktube? Um, you can go first. Okay. Um, I... I started watching BookTube when it was like uh, Christine from Pulling Bananas Books and Jesse and that sort of group, but um, I don't watch them so much anymore. I still watch Jesse sometimes, but uh, Clockwork Reader, Hannah, and then um, Haley from Bookland and Zoe, like Zoe Books or Zoe Reads, or I don't remember her channel name, but those three had like a reading uh, book club sort of thing for a little while, but I loved all of them. And then Kat from Paperback Dreams and uh, Chandler Ainsley were like my favorites. And Chandler Ainsley did some videos about like, here's how to start a booktube channel and here's some recommendations for like thumbnails and stuff like that. And so that kind of motivated me to get into it a little bit more. Yeah, see, I watched Booktube in 2017 because my sister was watching it. And then I realized it was, I like first started with like, you know, the big booktube, booktubers like Jesse and Christine yeah. and, Kat and whatever. And then later, like, I found more booktubers like Cindy and Emma. And then Ooh, I love Cindy and Emma. Okay. I, love I totally Emma. forgot. <laughs> and then recently, like, I've been following or I've been subscribed to Chandler since she was at like 5K and now she's at like 70K. So I've like seen her kind of grow and then 
she was like doing a 50k live and then I was like wait maybe this is something I kind of want to do and now she follows me so we've kind of come in full circle <laughs> yeah yeah um it's really cool <laughs> it's really cool to like be in this community and everyone's pretty nice and what's insane though is the amount of drama that happens like I haven't been in any late like lately ever <laughs> and I'm very happy about that but um even just seeing it on my timeline I'm like anxious for other people <laughs> I get that because also in my June wrap up, I kind of like not trash some favorite books, but like I say my opinion on like the book of the air trilogy and I didn't really like it that much. So I'm scared it's like going to come back to me. But at the same time, I didn't do this, like start a booktube channel for like any drama or like fame or subscriber count. So I'm just doing it because I love to talk about books. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, there's a lot going on. <laughs> um, Tuesday That's all my favorite. It's probably one of my favorite nonfiction novels ever. Okay, I haven't read that one. I will write it down. I have a pen. Okay. <laughs> I really want to read it because it's been on my to read, but when will I read? <laughs> okay. Um, what are y'all's favorite TV shows and movies? You go first. <laughs> Okay, well, my favorite movie has always been Mean Girls, like, you know, the nostalgia, I just remember loving it all the time, and I only watch movies if they're hyped up, like, in the theater or whatever, or if they're, like, based on books, so I'm not really a movie person, and then TV show, it's, again, probably hype, because I like You, I like Game of Thrones, I love Avatar, you know, well-known ones. <laughs> yeah, um... I, I grew up watching a ton of movies. My mom was a huge movie buff, and so I was too. Um, and I have a lot of favorite movies, and a lot of them are like less plot, more character. <laughs> um, and 50-50 is one of my favorites, and I think there's a lot. Um, it's, it's just funny. It's good. I love it. It's about cancer, which <laughs> like I feel like if I tell someone my favorite movie, I'm like, yeah, it's 50-50. It's about cancer. They're like, I'm like, but it's funny, okay? It's a very funny movie. And um, I just think it's well done. It's not super depressing, you know? Um, and then I also really like About Time, which is kind of sad at certain points too. I, I'm okay with crying. I, I accept that. <laughs> um, but About Time is fun and it has to do with like time travel, but not in like a crazy sci-fi way, um, which is fun. Um, I don't know what my favorite TV shows are. I'm currently watching Sherlock and I'm really enjoying it. Um, Love Sherlock. I have to say that. Love Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. I can't think. I I grew up watching Friends. I know all of the words to all of the episodes. Um, yeah. My mom had on DVD seasons 7 through 10. My grandparents had all of the seasons. Every holiday, I would be the one to go through and find the holiday episodes and play them throughout the day. Um, I'm yeah. more of an office person, so. Yeah. Um, I just, I never got into those. I think it's just because my family loved Friends so much and I just grew up watching it that it was like my thing. And then they took it off Netflix. I used to fall asleep w watching Friends because it was like familiar voices so I could fall asleep to it. Then they took it off Netflix and I was like, I can't fall asleep. <laughs> um, content warning for radio silence, animal abuse. It made me physically sick and I had known it would, if I had known, I would have skipped the part just so people know. Yeah, there's one part where it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's. I like going into books not really knowing much, so I'm going to keep that in mind, but yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Feminism it for 99% is good and it's the only one I've read with a focus on the U.S., it's good, even though I disagree a bit. Okay. So the title is Feminism for 99%? I'll write that down. <laughs> yeah, I think like the, mainly the feminist literature I've read is either in poetry or, you know, just like, we should all be feminists, you know? Yeah, the like, Amanda, is that her name? Amanda Lovelace? Amanda Lovelace. Yeah. yeah, she writes a lot of like feminist poetry and I really love reading it. It's um it's fun. It's good. Like her books are like good. My favorite is The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one because so that's good. What I love the most. Yeah. yeah. But like the other ones, I just feel like you have to connect to them and most poetry is, you know, about their personal experience and it's nothing I could have really liked. 
Yeah, the only ones I've read are uh, The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one and To Make Monsters Out of Girls. Those are the only two of hers either, that I've read. And I've seen the other ones in stores, but I've just never been interested in them. Like The Witch, I was like, Witch, I like that. <laughs> but then Mermaid, I was like, my mom would like that. And then I just didn't pick it up. <laughs> Not that I, I love my mom. I love her recommendations. <laughs> um, yes, the title is Feminism for 99%. Okay, cool. Uh, it's a manifesto, so quite political. Hmm. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so what are you doing later today? Later today, I don't know. I've been so wrapped up in Twilight and like vlogging reading Twilight and I'm like, I'm, I'm done. It's over. I'm finally done. <laughs> and I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, I finished Twilight yeah, right. in one day and then New Moon in one day and then Eclipse in one day. And Breaking Dawn look, took me three days to get through. I don't know why. Um, Twilight took me, I feel like it took me about three days because I was, I was dreading it a lot. <laughs> um, but like, oh, that's oh, one. <laughs> overall I actually really enjoyed it. it like the worst writing I think out of all of them but it was funny to read <laughs> um and I just I really liked it because also all of the stuff with Jacob it wasn't as annoying and it wasn't as pronounced and so it was manageable okay that's good um but then I did not like New Moon even though New Moon is my favorite movie I think out of all of them um, it's just, it's good. And so I was so excited for the book and it just let me down. And then I liked Eclipse overall, but, um, that one scene just kind of ruined it for me. I was not it's okay so with it. Annoying. And like, I, <laughs> I, I like cried <laughs> and I, I was like, do I put that in the video? Do I not put that in the video? And I was like, let's put that in the video. I'm upset about it. <laughs> I'm going to talk the about most it. Part, I think I was, you know, new moon where it just like goes by her months or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that was so heartbreaking. <laughs> that that scene in the movie, I think, is really well done. Um, and so it was it was interesting to see it in the book because I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, I didn't know if she was going to describe it because she was, like, so catatonic. I didn't know if she would. But, um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. How's your July reading going so far? I've read five books, and I'm on my sixth. It's so hard. I keep like going the opposite way. <laughs> Me too. See, I've read four books, but it's mainly because I've just been editing and filming. And it's so annoying because I knew book two would take time away from my reading, but I did not expect how much time. Uh -huh. So that's annoying. Yeah, so there are certain things where it's like, sometimes it takes a lot of time away, especially with like vlogs, because instead of just reading straight, I'm like, oh, I got to give my opinions. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it depends on the video. It's it's very difficult sometimes. It's very annoying. That's why I'm excited for the reading rush, so I can just read and not worry about all this. Yeah. Guys, I finished reading Crooked Kingdom and I'm broken. It's so good. It's so good. I feel like it's better though. But Crooked Kingdom. I like Six of Crows a lot better. I think even though I'm much more character driven, I like more character <laughs> I'm character driven. Um, even though I like more character driven books the plot in Crooked Kingdom was like mildly lacking for me. I felt like it was kind of just like all over the place, whereas you had a specific heist and plan in Six of Crows. But um, yeah, so I like Six of Crows more, but you get Wyland's perspective in Crooked Kingdom. So Wyland's my favorite character. I love him. I honestly thought Wyland and Jesper's relationship was just not exactly built on the best. I still gave both books five stars. And like you, I'm more character driven. So like the character expose in Six of Crows, I'm just holding my mic for no reason. The character <laughs> expose in Six of Crows was just better to me. But yeah, uh -huh. it's so good. Yeah. Both books. So good. Oh my gosh. Kuei Bo. I love <laughs> him. <laughs> it was so funny. And that scene with Jesper and when Wylan walks in. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> gold. Okay. I can probably tell the TV show. Weird question. How do you feel about real life people knowing about your channel? Because <laughs> I get uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Okay. 
so I haven't told anyone yet about my channel. So my main like three friends know about my channel and they're in my live streams. My whole family knows about it because like they're wondering why I'm in front of a camera all day. <laughs> and then I haven't like posted on any of my social medias or anything about it. So the, my school friends who have discovered my channel are there because of like they found me on Instagram or something. And yeah, I haven't told anyone about it and I'm probably not going to anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, my family knows and like you, my three closest friends know. And then one of my friends, her parents know and they subscribe to me and it was really cute. Um, but yeah, and then my mom was like, can I share this video of yours on Facebook? And I was like, what? <laughs> I say no. Like my parents were like, can we share this in our like, for, like we have like a family friend group like, with like 15 families. Can we share it in the group chat? I'm like, no, absolutely not. Yeah, mm -mm. I told her yes, because I don't know how to say no. Um, <laughs> and then I like, I haven't like seen anything. And then I think my dad told my grandma Sue and he was like, grandma Sue's gonna email you soon and ask for your channel link. And I was like, but then she never did. So I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I created like separate social media for it. Um, although I never had a Twitter before, so I just created a Twitter. And then one of my friends followed me on it and I was like, stop, <laughs> you're not seeing so, Yeah, now. I created um, a new Instagram account and a new Twitter account or like I had it, but it was just like my spam Twitter for books and my actual like Instagram and Twitter are like private. And now I have like book people requesting it. And I'm like, maybe I should make an announcement to not follow me there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, because like, you're not missing out on anything. It's literally like my life. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, there are certain things where it's like, I don't really want to tell people where I live. Like Arizona, you can know that, but you know. <laughs> Lena, I haven't told any of my friends about my channel and only my immediately family, LOL. Yeah, it's a, uh, I, my family knows because they need to know <laughs> um, because I'm here. And then my friends know because I'm like, I have to read this book because it's for a video. And they're like, <laughs> um, your mom knows? Okay, yeah. Told me that I'm allowed to make videos and I didn't tell her. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and then I'm probably like, you read a lot though, so you'll probably catch up on the reading rush or like yeah, yeah. Um, and then Charlotte, you have read so much this year though. Yeah, I love the duology, but Kirk and Kingdom finished me. Can I? <laughs> yes. Low birds. I love it. Why? Six of Crows isn't like one of my favorite series of all time is definitely because of Kinedge. Not like I hate it or anything. It's because like there's just so much potential for it. But Ketterdam is just one of those cities where like love isn't supposed to thrive, you know? So it makes sense why the relationship isn't that built on. But the romance reader in me, well, not really romance, but like romance driven reader in me was like. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> um, just like, it's so at the end of Code Kingdom, it's like, hey. <laughs> And then yeah. is there a third book coming out? Because I feel like I've heard things about that for a while. Yeah. I mean, there is King of Scars, which follows like Nikolai and whatever. So I need to read that after I read Shadow and Bone. Who's Nikolai? Oh, he's in like the Shadow Bone series. Like, oh, is he the like map maker that she was friends with at the beginning? Kind, I think so. But like, have you read the Grisha trilogy? Which are, like, I've only the read the first book. Oh, he's like the king, I think. Or the oh. prince? The blonde guy? Okay, I'll, I'll figure it out at some point. <laughs> also, I have to leave in like at 4.10, if that's okay. I have okay. an internship. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, Aaron, have you read Aquatar? I haven't, but I'm planning on reading it soon. Um, wait, I, I need to read it. Oh, Aquatar 2. The second book. Okay. <laughs> I thought you meant two, like T O O. <laughs> and because my brain just doesn't work. So, yeah. <laughs> so I read a few pages of Akatar, but like, as people said, it's slow. But like, I will read Sarah J. Mass. I'm not opposed. Did I'm you? not like. Yeah. Her, yeah. her sisters just really bothered me. And I was like, I cannot get on this train. Like, I get that you love your sisters. Like, I have sisters. I know that. But God, they sucked. <laughs> Yeah, but like, then again, siblings, like, don't really matter to me. It's really the main characters that are, like, I should, mm -hmm. to, like. Yeah. The ending, um, like, I think, <laughs> oh, I can't talk about the ending. Yeah, I read it. 
Can one of you guys yeah. explain the reading rush? I'm so overwhelmed with it being everywhere, but I really want to participate. Just don't know what it is. Um, you can watch the Reading Rush's videos. I feel like they have a channel with Ariel mm -hmm. and Raylene explaining it. It's basically just seven days and then some booktubers like blog about it. And then they also do these Twitter reading sprints, which like I got asked to host. So that's really exciting. So then you oh, can just cool. like sign. Yeah, you, like Ariel DM me and I'm like, too, too many things are happening right now. And you can just like join in. It's basically one week where like most book related people are reading. Okay, so, so I'm putting the link in the chat, and I think that's the link for the challenge announcements. So um, those are all of the challenges, and people do. I think you already said basically everything about it. <laughs> but if you want to know what the book challenges are, then that's the link. I we should join. Yeah. Um, what are y'all's non-bookish hobbies? Uh <laughs> I mean, I run a few clubs at my school, so that's exciting. And then I like to run because I used to do cross country in middle school, but the high school I go to is like a career focused school. I don't know. It's like a new thing. And um, they don't have sports there. So I just do that oh, by wow. myself. And I read. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like doing art a lot. I've gotten into a little bit of oil painting recently, which has been really fun. But before that, I mostly liked watercolor and stuff. Um, I also, when I was in high school, I did this thing called comedy sports. And it's like, it's like improv, I guess, but with like certain themed games. I don't know if you guys have seen, if any of you guys have Netflix, Middle Ditch and Schwartz is like a stand up comedy sort of thing, but it's all improvised. Like it's not a bit discussed beforehand. They go off of suggestions from the audience and that's kind of what we did in comedy sports and that was so fun. Um, just thinking off the top of your head, trying to be funny. <laughs> um, it, it was really fun and I had a lot of fun doing that. And I think I found that there's a club at my college that does that as well. And so I'm like, hmm, we'll see. Uh, what is the team? Well, okay, so I'm in a few clubs. The ones I've started, I started like HSDA, which is High School Democrats for America. And then I'm also in like student government. I'm in a few like um, like competition clubs we have in America, like HOSA, or like you probably don't know what those are um, if you're not from here. And then um, I'm also in like Habitat for Humanity. And then I started like, um, what is it called? It's like SPA, Students for Planetary Awareness. So yeah, my school's new. Cause like, you know, as I said, mm -hmm we can just like start whatever clothes we want. Oh, I'm in debate. That's a thing. <laughs> That's cool. Are you into languages? Um, yes, I love learning languages. I only like, I had a very weird education with languages. <laughs> when I was growing up at my elementary school, you could either take Spanish or Italian because I lived in Little Italy, which is like, they have one of those, it's like Chinatown and every, big city there's one of those like a neighborhood that's very Italian you know um and my school was in that neighborhood so I chose to like learn Italian I don't remember anything <laughs> um and then in middle school I did Spanish for like a year and a half and then I was homeschooled and I did Latin for a year and a half but they put me in the wrong program so I was doing kindergarten Latin and I was so confused. I was like, why do I have so many coloring pages? I don't understand. But I colored them because I was bored. Um, <laughs> and then in French, in, in high school, I took three years of French. So, yeah. Um, I'm bilingual. I speak Telugu at home because my parents are Indian, um, if you're curious. And then sure. I took Spanish for two years. And like, it's easy in high school, at least. Like I got a 99 and then I did it online. And then now I have an extra space, which I do yearbook. Cool. Okay. You have a debate club? Yeah. We had one. It was my A push teacher that like ran it. Um, but I would never participated. I just remember I went to one of the meetings one time because I was like asking for help after school and then they were like having a debate club meeting and I was like, oh <laughs> um I'm a debate community. What kind of debate do you do? So I've been debating for like ever, like since middle school. So um, I've been doing public forum. I've never done anything else. And I do with my twin sister. We like debate together. And then 
in high school, I quit my debate league that I do outside of school, which was like a national thing. And then now I just coach debate. So I don't personally debate anymore. I'm just like, I'm one of the presidents. So I have to like teach it. Cool. But public forum. <laughs> I personally do Congress and DX. Ooh, speechy girl. <laughs> I'm a member of political youth party as well. So that's most of my free time. Yeah. That's most of my free time this summer, too, because the internship I'm in is a political organization. So mm -hmm. elections are coming up, guys. <laughs> oh, speaking of, it's 110. Do you need it? Yeah, I was, gonna, I was about to say that. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Emma. This is so fun. Mm -hmm. By the way, guys, we're doing this next week, too. I think on yeah. my channel, if you yeah. want. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you guys can, like, stick around. I don't know. We can still talk. Um, <laughs> up to you guys. If you all leave, I'll know that I can stop. <laughs> up to you. Thank um, you, Emma. I actually like love doing this. So, like, thanks. It was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bye. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys want to keep doing this. That's totally up to you. Uh, I'm fine. I don't really have anything to do. I I could read, but. Who cares about reading, right? Just mm. <laughs> so, just let me know what's going on. <laughs> How are you? Forgot to ask. Um, I'm doing well, thank you. I actually. Maybe. <laughs> uh, my family think that like we might have coronavirus, but um, I don't like, I don't know. I don't have any symptoms really. Um, and neither does my little sister because we're very young and young people don't tend to show sy symptoms. But my stepmom has some like uh, immune system, immune. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Why can't I think? Um, some issues with her immune system. And so she's like showing the most symptoms, but she's feeling a lot better. She's probably still contagious and we're not going outside, but um, we're all feeling better, which is good. But overall I'm feeling okay. <laughs> I just um, mildly worried about that. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you for being here. That was so fun. <laughs> Hi Bex, how are you? It, it's, it's okay. Um, it's, it's life, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I try to not like worry about that stuff too much because worrying, not great. What is it that like Newt said? Like worrying makes you suffer twice or something. I try to live by that. I'm not very good at it, but I try to live by it, so. <laughs> um, what have you guys been reading? I know. Erin just said that she finished Crooked Kingdom, but I don't think anyone said what they were doing. Uh, it's okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, I don't know what to, like when people say sorry, I don't know if I should say thank you. Like, I, I, I don't want you to worry about it, you know? So like, thank you for your apologies. I'm always so confused about that. Like, what do you say to people? Like human contact, it's difficult, so. I'm reading Loveless. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's, I have it on the way here from, I think like book depository. Um, and I cannot wait for it to get here and I'm so excited and I just I really want to read it. <laughs> um, I'm very excited for that to come in the mail. How are you liking it so far? Uh, and I'm thinking of ending things. Okay. I've seen, who did I see talking about that? Uh, Cat from Paperback Dreams. And I think there was someone else who was reading it? Um, but yeah, it's it's like a thriller, right? Or is it horror? I don't know. Because it looks interesting, but I haven't read much of the thriller or horror genre. Um, I'm a scaredy cat, but I'm willing to try, you know? <laughs> Especially I feel like in books it might be easier. Less jump scares, you know? In movies, jump scares are what like really gets me, so. I'm gonna drink water because I'm dehydrated, so. <laughs> I'm sorry if you guys could hear any of that. I really apologize. <laughs> um, 
in case any of you were here at like the very beginning, the storm has seemed to like, it's still very gray, but I haven't heard any thunder and it stopped raining. So that's where we're at with that. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, something I feel like I don't address this on my channel that much, but um, since I can't really go back and edit this, you might be able to hear, like, with the mic that I have, um, my heart. I have a mechanical valve, uh, which makes my heart beat extremely loud, which makes filming videos very annoying because I can hear it, and I don't think other people can. I think I'm just hyper aware of it. But, yeah, I have a mechanical valve, so if you can hear, like, beating that's probably what that is I don't know if you can just like in case you guys are like what is that ticking noise <laughs> sorry I just don't know what to do I'm very awkward <laughs> at the moment okay It's a bit black and white, like it's good, but Alice chose some simple way to do the plot and I'm fine with it, but not make the character less interesting in the process. Okay, so, okay, so like the character is losing some of its interest or it's uh because the plot's more like, wait, I can't read. <laughs> so the plot is simple. And is she making the character more basic? Not like basic, but flat? Or is it like elevating the character oh, process? Yeah. I can't hear it, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm always worried about that. And like, I've, I've shown the video to my dad and he was like, I didn't even notice until you pointed it out to me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it would happen a lot in tests too. I'd be in school and I can hear it off and on, like it's always there, obviously, my heart's always there, but um, I can't always hear it unless I really focus on it, and I would be taking a test, and then all of a sudden I'd like hear it, and then it would start beating louder, because I'd be really nervous that people around me could hear it, and then it'd start beating louder, um, it was just a very bad cycle, <laughs> but yeah, I so far like in class, people really haven't noticed, I had one time someone was like really annoyed. And she was like, oh my God, who's making that ticking sound? And I was like, it's my heart. I can't really stop, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, and then other people mostly have just been like, do you hear that? And I'm like, yeah, that's my heart. And they're like, oh, that's cool. Um, so yeah. <laughs> like doing two characters be the opposite of each other just to make the plot work. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Like. Uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> just very opposite characters, like the good one, the bad one. I'm just, all I can think of is like Mary Kate and Ashley movies. Like one of them was always the girly one and one of them was always the sporty one and, or like the more academic one or something like that. Um, it's just, it's very done. <laughs> it's done a lot. And so I think it can get annoying sometimes. Um, so yeah. Um, have you read her other books? Because I've only read Radio Silence and Heartstopper. I've never read um, I've never read We Were Born For This, but I have that on the mail, on the way in the mail as well. So, like an introvert and an extrovert. Okay. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, hmm. That'll be like, I wonder who I'll uh, relate to more because I'm an ambivert. <laughs> I've taken the like Myers-Briggs test um, and the first time I got ENFP and it was like 47% uh, introvert and 53% extrovert and then I took it again because I couldn't find the old like format and I didn't know my password so I took it again and I got exactly opposite. I got 53% introvert and 47% extrovert so yeah, and almost all of the other columns were pretty similar to what I remember them. So I I guess I answered all of the questions pretty similar to how I did last time, except for maybe a couple, and then I got switched. So 
I wonder if there's going to be one that I like relate to more. Same. I have heard the others are bad. Okay. Um, oh yeah, solitaire. I haven't heard good things about that. Um, yeah, I haven't heard very many good things about that, and I don't think that's one I want to read. But I want to read. We were born for this because I don't. I don't think I've heard a lot on it. I don't know too much about it actually. Um, and then. Yeah, but I don't plan on reading Solitaire anytime soon. Same. Okay, so like Ambivert. Oh, it's raining again. <laughs> okay. Um... Where are you from, Lena? I feel like I don't know this. You don't have to like tell me, but <laughs> like just, are you from the US? I don't remember. You, you're probably from the UK if you already have Loveless. Just just guessing or something like that. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I feel very awkward being the only person here. I feel like I'm not like engaging enough to keep this going. <laughs> uh, so yeah. From Norway. Oh, that's cool. I really want to visit there someday. Um, the most north I've been, like, besides, well, I mean, I was in London, so that's not very north. It's the very south of the UK. Um, but I've been up to, like, the Netherlands. I've never been anywhere more north than that, I think. Um, yeah, I really want to go there someday. I love, like, I love a lot of Norwegian things like there are just certain lifestyles that you see and stuff like that and then Norse mythology is really interesting um I don't know if that's like a big part of your culture probably just like I don't know when I went to Greece like there were obviously still the old uh like the Parthenon and stuff like that where uh or the Pantheon I always get those mixed up but they still have certain things for like the Greek gods and stuff but um it's not like a super big way of life anymore in Greece. And so I don't really know how it's like with Norse mythology in Norway, but yeah, I would love to visit there someday. It's very strange because um, it's like gray and then you can see the blue sky. So it's like only raining right over my house, but I can see where it's not raining. <laughs> of course, but more a part of Iceland. Okay, yeah. Um, sorry, my sister slammed her door. <laughs> She's very good at doing that. <laughs> um, yeah. That's cool. I there's there's a lot of places I still want to visit. I still want to visit a lot more of Northern Europe, and then um, I want to visit south of France because I've been to Paris and it was really cool. But it was also like Paris it was very intense, um, and people there were pretty nice overall. Like you always hear that people are very rude if you don't have like the perfect French accent and stuff like that. Um, and overall, like. I'm not trying to brag, but I have a pretty good French accent. I talked to a couple French people and they were like, yeah, there were only a couple of things that I noticed that you like weren't actually French. And I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, but I there was one lady who was like really mean because I was really nervous because she was like a store owner and talking to someone who's like a store owner, you know, they're it's almost like they're above me. <laughs> um, and so I was very nervous, and so I stumbled a little bit. And then it, I asked her if she spoke English, and then she just said, no, like, very upset. 
And I was like, okay, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, go to Russia. Okay. I, yeah, I've never like, I don't know what to do in Russia. I, I have an envelope, um, something I ordered on like Etsy and it's from Moscow. And so I like kept the envelope because of all the stamps and I thought it looked really cool, but I don't really know what I would do there, but I'm really interested to see. I've, there's, yeah, I want to, I would love to go there. I also want to go to like a few places that we kind of skipped over. Um, and then like the South of France, I really want to go there because I haven't um, been there before, you know? <laughs> okay, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I don't know much about Russia, honestly. Um, and so it'd be interesting to go there and travel and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I also really want to visit more parts of Ireland because uh, I've been to Dublin, which was amazing. Um, and people tell me that that's like the worst part of Ireland. So I'm looking forward to the rest of it at some point. I also really want to go to Scotland. Um, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to end soon. Um, you know, so probably at around like 1.30 maybe I'll stop. But if you have any like last minute Questions? Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I really don't know what to talk about at this point. <laughs> um, currently, it's starting to rain, like, a little bit more intensely. Okay, one last. What is your favorite memory from Europe? Um, oh my gosh. It's very hard. There were a lot of, like, really simple things that were extremely funny. Um, but I think it's really hard. I'm trying to think of like one. Um, <laughs> so it was my mom's birthday and we were in Dublin and my mom loves whiskey. So we went to the Jameson distillery and that was super fun going there. And like, uh, just cause they have, it's not like a full shot because that would be a lot to hand out, but it's like, probably like a quarter or a third of a shot. And they have the Jameson and then an American brand, which is probably like Jack Daniels. And then they have Scottish whiskey, um, scotch. <laughs> and so you get to taste all of the different ones. And like from that assessment, Jameson is like really good. <laughs> um, but yeah. And so it was really fun doing that with her. And then we, uh, we went to a local pub and I think this was right before the distillery. We were playing Go Fish at the bar um, because we had just bought some playing cards and we had a bunch of time to kill. And I really needed a seven. I was like, oh my gosh, I just, I need a seven. And the bartender heard me and he like tore up a bit of blank receipt and like wrote seven on it. And he was like, here's your seven. And I was like, thanks man. And my mom was like, okay, it counts. <laughs> um, so that was really fun. And then later that night, uh, we ate dinner and these three gentlemen, one of them was Irish and the other two were from the Netherlands and they just started like talking to my mom um, and they were talking to me too. They weren't like ignoring me, but um, they were mostly talking to my mom. And then I became like oddly really good friends with one of the guys. His name was Vitze and um, he was like, he just reminded me of a lot of like my mom's friends um, who were just really chill and like uh, playing, you know, just uh, like teasing almost, kind of like when you're the younger person, you get teased. Um, but it was really fun. And then they suggested a bar for us to go to for my mom's birthday. And then they showed up there later 
And I was convinced that I had met the love of my life in Ireland. Not one of those guys. It was a bartender. <laughs> um, and then I never talked to him again because I left like two days later. But yeah, I was like totally convinced for a little bit that I met the love of my life. Um, and then I was like, eh, probably not. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a really fun day overall because there was just a lot that happened and it was very silly but it was very fun and um they also i begged the dj to play come on eileen which was one of my favorite songs and uh he finally played it and so i was like dancing with my mom that was that was a really good day <laughs> um yeah so that's everything that was a lot more than one memory but it was one day so <laughs> thank you <laughs> it was it was really fun okay I'm going to leave now. I hope you have a good time in Norway. Um, what, I, it's probably sort of late for you over there. Uh, let me see if I can figure out what time it is over there. I don't know off the top of my head. Ooh, there's two different time zones in Norway. <laughs> so I don't know, but it's probably, oh, 10.30 PM. Okay, that's, that's like late, but not too late. I was worried that it was like 3 a.m. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna go now. Thank you so much for sticking around. This was really fun just talking to you. Um, and yeah, it was really fun. So thank you. And next week, if you want to see me and Nitty um, talking again, it'll probably, I don't know what time it is exactly. If it'll be the same time, we'll talk that out. But um, next week, it'll be on her channel. Okay, I'm going to end this. So bye.